Hello again. How you doing? As you guys so very nicely held on for months. So I'm trying to walk slowly because someone said I was making them feel ill. I'm being slow. Being very slow. Because uh, you guys held on for months uh, when it came to the MT blogs, I thought I'd give you another one pretty soon afterwards. Uh, not a huge amount of stuff, but just a little tickle. Um, including, uh, we shot a bike for the centrefold of the magazine, which is going to be out soon, 27th, uh, and it was an MT10, and it was absolutely lovely. Um, made me feel bad, actually, like I'm not making enough of an effort, quite frankly. Uh, this guy called Carl, really nice bloke, and his MT10 was stunning. Anyway, I caught up with him on the shoot, which you can see here. Hey, guys. I'm down here with a man called Carl. Say hi, Carl. Hi. Hi. Because Carl has an MT10, and quite frankly, I think it puts mine to shame. Sort of. Well, yeah, it does. Cleaner. It is clean. Now, we're going to come out here. It's a bit windy, but it's going to show you around it, all right, quickly, and then we'll come back on a quick chat with Carl. But, look at that. Not sure about the revs your heart thing, Carl. Yamaha's words, not mine. Yeah. No, Yamaha's is rise up your darkness. Rise up your darkness. Lovely Austin racing. Bye, mate. Let's get in out of the wind a little bit. So, saw an Olin shock in there. Yep. That's for an R1M, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed, yep. de electronic -ed. Yep, manual adjusters put in instead of the electronics. Lovely old job. And the Austin Racing, I did think about I did think about their stuff, but that is pretty sweet. But that's just their can. The link pipe and the, the front part of the system's off of an R1, titanium mm -hmm. headers. Then the link pipe itself is off of an R1, but it's modified slightly to fit the MT, just a bracket underneath. Mm. That was from Pipeworks, which mm -hmm. I have their R11 can at home for the track days that I'm going to be doing on oh, it. Oh yeah, no Jeff. Under, yeah. Jeff's a good boy, yeah. That's it, Jeff sorted me out. Um, and then I made up the, um, the boss to fit the AR can to that for the noise. Oh, wicked. And what I do really like as well, again, apart from the Roger Hart bit, um, is your take on the Yamaha Speedlock. Yeah, well I wanted to do an anniversary and I looked around for a while and I like white and I like the BMW colour that's on top which mm -hmm. is like a black so I thought well, well let's do it, shall we? Mate, she's um, lovely. So yeah, it took a while to do but it's there. Anyone else got any really lovely smart MTs out there? Because he's gone to a length which I haven't gone to and I feel bad about it now. But anyway, right, oh, boys all going. So bye boys. Bye boys. Bye boys, bye boys. See you, bye. Nice MT10, wasn't it? Uh, well done, Carl. I think his is a bit of a work in progress as well. I think he's got a bit more to do to it, so I'll be quite uh, excited to see it when it's the finished article. And yeah, <laughs> nice idea with the suspension as well by um, taking the R1M suspension and de electronicling it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyway, uh, alluded to something to do with the chain in the last blog, and so anyway, this is what I was kind of alluding to basically. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make anyone suck eggs here, but some people don't know, and I'm rubbish at cleaning, and James just wants to show you how to bring a chain back to life, and then we start talking about other stuff, including some quite exciting stuff, so over to JHS. Hey guys, right, as some of you would remember from the last blog, I said that we had, my chain was completely knackered, um, a combination of many things, including partial laziness on my part, but winters, and not cleaning it as often, and I said, I'd left it like this for a reason. Now the reason is because James is going to just basically say how you can bring a knackered, what looks like rusty and buggered chain back to life with just three components. Three components? Well, probably four. Four. Okay, well, four components. Okay, James, so obviously, now this chain doesn't look very healthy, does it? No, but it's not worn out. It's not had its day. You know, it's still pretty tight on the sprockets. Mm -hmm. So, but it's covered in grime, grit, and all the other muck. A little bit surface on. rust. Yeah, yeah, surface rust has got in there. So, it's only very, very simple. And this is not the worst one we'd ever see, but it's not the best one we'd ever see. But you could bring this back. You're never going to get it back to exactly how it was. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get a damn sight better because what you've got on here at the moment is just an amalgamation of these elements of the grease and oil and the grit, which is like grinding paste, mm. which will wear the chain and spock it out prematurely. So the easiest way to do it is a wire brush to start with. Not a great Simple. one, just mm -hmm. a little 
right, and just clean the plates and just loosen the dirt up as much as you possibly can. Now, you could do it quickly and whiz round and be done with it, or you can have a bit of time, have the music going, have a tin, <laughs> eh? <laughs> right? But this gets the, the dirt moving, all right? So it gets it so we can get it off. Okay. But we've got two cleaners. Now, I like this cleaner. It's like a detergent type cleaner that yeah. won't upset the, the O-rings or X-rings in the chain. Right? Now, this breaks down the dirt pretty quick. We use this in the workshop on loads of things. We just leave it on there. You know, a little test piece is um, on the wheel. Yeah. See the wheel's all dirty here. Yeah. Horrible. Watch this. It is already just running away with it, isn't it? Just running away with it, and you get like that. Look at that. The filth just comes off. It does, isn't it? And we can wipe that. And have a brand new wheel. That's good cleaner. That is really good cleaner. I like it. I so, like it. Where can I get some? <laughs> oh, I, 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 it's available. I'll show you the, the okay. stuff and fancy. You know, it's not like trade secrets or anything like that. Gotcha. It's all standard stuff. And there's plenty of degreasers you can buy on the market from all the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And one in particular we do like is Motor do a chain cleaner and a chain lube. Uh, what is it? This one product or two separate two products? Two separate products. Right. You can buy them as a pair. Yeah. Not very dear. Through your Motor outlets. Mm -hmm. Brilliant for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. But we're just using common everyday stuff you find in your workshop at the moment. Actually, that was a really stupid fucking question, wasn't it? What two the same? Chain cleaner and chain lube. <laughs> well, you Sorry. Might to, you might be able to get them in a, in a thing. Might have a twin spout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. This is all eaten into it now. So mm -hmm. we'll give it another little rub because it's got a bit of cleaner into it. Yeah. And this really has loosened it up. I can feel it spraying on my arm. Hmm. Alright, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it another little bit. Yeah. And we're only working on a small area. Mm -hmm. Alright, and just let that soak for a minute. And then get a bit of rag out your mum's cupboard. Yeah. But don't let her know. She, or your wife's, don't use your wife's drawers. <laughs> Alright, give it a bit of a rub. And a bit of a clean. A bit of elbow grease. You see how the chain guard as well is coming up. Look. Yeah, yeah. You can use it on everywhere. Well, that's bringing that chain back now, see? Oh, it is. If you compare... To that. To that. Because a lot of people might literally look at that chain and say, it's fucked, or an unscrupulous garage may look at that chain and say, you, you need a new chain. When the and truth in all is, honesty, they're in some ways right because the chain has got so much grit and muck mm. crud in it that it's at its day, but with a little bit of elbow grease, a piece of rag, a bit of cleaner, a wire brush, you can bring that back. Yeah. Okay, so after we've done this to the whole chain, what yeah. happens next? Right, what we would ordinarily do then, for argument's sake, we've done the whole chain. Yeah. We're now going to lube it. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do in my opinion, yeah, may not be everybody's opinion, but in my opinion, is to spray on a chain wax. Okay. Why is that? Right. I'll show you. I'll okay. Some, I'll get some You're going to go get some wax. We'll follow him as he goes. James is currently going to get some wax. He's just going to go past John. I'm sure we've got some wax here. John never moves, by the way. He's just always got his head in the bike on his desk. Unless he's learning how to surf porn with his mum's glasses on. <laughs> oh. You have to go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. But a brief brief interlude while James goes upstairs to Product tell commercial. us. Product commercial. <laughs> Chain wax. Ready? Chain wax. Right. So it sits in there? Yep. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on there. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. It sits on the outside. It's not very nice. Yeah. No. We get our favourite item. Yeah. Which is 
<laughs> Not at all. Commercial break again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And I'm just going to spray this lightly. Yep. Yeah. Did you see it disappear the, into the where into the, the links and are. stuff? Yeah. Exactly. Right. I'll do it. I'll do it again. Yep. Right. You see it? Oh, it's sexual. Just goes. Now, there's more chance of this lube getting in behind those O-rings mm -hmm. and lubricating on the pins and the inside of the rollers than that ever will. Yeah. Is it because too thick? It's just a wax. Yeah. It's sprayed on. Oh. Mm, I see what you mean. We wrap our favourite brand. Look at that. Yeah, gotcha. Understood. Yeah, well, hey, listen, you know, you've got to go with what you like, and you're not a, a fan of wax, but Plus you are also, a fan of wax. you've got this on here. Yeah. It makes the chain look very presentable straight away. Where that... That is mucky. It's just mucky and horrible. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, mate. Um, going back to the chain, though, I mean, you literally were doing that for just a couple of minutes. If you were to... To do the whole chain, it's going to take you half hour. Yeah, yeah, to do each bit and get it looking but once beautiful. Once you do that mm -hmm. and got the, the, the worst of it off, then you can use your bulk products, i.e., a chain cleaner and a mm -hmm. chain lube kit, yeah. and you can keep on top of this really easy. Yeah. Because the chain cleaner is just a slightly weaker version of this kind of stuff. Right, okay. And this is just an oil degreaser. You know, we've got brake cleaner in this one. Mm -hmm. Common garden brake cleaner. Yeah, that'll take it then. Yeah, that'll also. Okay. You can buy that in aerosols now. So, at what point does it? How bad does a chain have to be that you do need to swap it? Well, the old rule of thumb was, if you could pull it off the sprockets, yeah, you've got wear in all this round here, so you can pull, take the slack up. Mm -hmm. That was the old rule of thumb. But a lot of O-ring chains now sit so tight on the sprockets that generally you're looking at your wear indicators mm -hmm. if you're gearing standard. And so, so many people change their gearing now, say, put a tooth on the rear so that moves the wheel forward. Mm -hmm. So you can't really use that as a telltale. You've got to look at the simple little things. It's the run of the chain line. Yep. Make sure it's not got any fixed tight spots in it, mm -hmm. which yours hasn't, yours is good chain still, yep. okay, and being very careful, and this is very important because lots of people have done this, if you're going to turn the wheel with the wheel in the air, keep your fingers away from this, <laughs> all right, yeah. this is dangerous, because once you get them trapped, that's it, you go all the way round or whatever, yeah, well, if you look in the very latest issue of the magazine, in the star letter, there is someone missing the end of his finger yes. exactly because yes. of this. Treat this with the... We gave him some gloves. Yeah, <laughs> the utmost of respect. Yeah. Yeah, because well, a lot of people, when they're just cleaning stuff, they'll put it up on the paddock stand and... Yeah, and the other thing you see people do, they've got the bike running, they go, oh, and they're cleaning it, and it's running. Don't not do it. Just don't do it. No. Don't do it. Just do it by hand and be aware of where your hands are. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't got gloves on, but a lot of people like wear gloves. You know, you can buy all sorts of stuff. Yeah. But if you look at how the wheel turns, right, you can look at how the, the chain runs onto the sprockets, mm. and yours is running pretty square. Yeah. So that means your wheel alignment's good. Mm -hmm. right, and as you, as you rotate it, you'll see the chain, if it's got any tight spots in it, come yeah. through as a tight spot. Well, you haven't got that. You've got a nice chain still. Can you get rid of tight spots, or...? No, generally as a rule of thumb, that's wear. That's the pin worn in the roller, mm -hmm. and subsequently is lifted. Right. So that's it, it's finished. Right, okay. okay. If you get anything like tight spots in it, it's finished. Yeah. Chuck it away. But your chain is perfectly serviceable, mm -hmm. it's just very dirty. I know, I'm sorry. And unsightly. Although, when we decided to do this, I did, as I... Purposely, I didn't really lube it, I didn't do anything with it because I wanted it to look rubbish. But there's, there's so much lube and crud on it anyway. You know, just, just visually, that point to that point mm. on that stretch there, it's minutes. Yeah. You do it a couple of rotations and give it a couple of times, like, it'll come back beautiful. Yeah, no, it will, won't it? It really will come back beautiful. So there you go, that's how to turn that into that and with even more time, even shinier. Yes. Good, that, innit? So there's a bit of tip. So, right, James. 
Oh, there goes someone. Well, I've got you here. Um, in the last blog, I alluded to the fact that I had changed the tyres on this bike. Yep. And that had, in turn, uh, adjusted the geometry. Now, I've had a couple of people kind of email me going, what? They didn't realise this could happen. I mean, Gary from Bridgestone wrote about it in our track day guide yep. he gave away. Yep. Um, so I just want you to kind of back up what he said, that the different aspect or radius of the tyre can adjust the geometry of a bike. Well, that's the magic word, the aspect, aspect of mm -hmm. it. Now, on the side of a tyre, it gives you lots of information, and this particular tyre, being the Bridgestone, it's a 190... 55 ZR17. Yeah. Okay. So that's a 190 mil cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a 55% raise on it. Yeah. Okay. But that's not that. That's no. the raise center to center on the, the 195. Now, what you'll get from different manufacturers and different tire constructions and different usage is this aspect or radius of the tire will change. And that will have an effect on the way the bike handles, i.e. its ride heights, and the way it turns in, pitches, mm. and so forth and so on. That's why you, you'll, you'll read between the lines of some racers, they, they switch from Pirelli to Dunlop, and, or, or vice versa, and Bridgestones, and, and they, they're setting the bike up to change. You think, why are they setting it? It's all to do with that aspect. Okay, because I've noticed on this, Whereas with your setup on the front and the Nitron Shock on the Pirellis, and we had it a little bit more on the nose, now it's actually a bit flatter. Yeah. And yep. it doesn't quite turn it as quick. It won't turn as quick because this now is, is flatter, it's not so pointed. Mm. Where well, it is more stable. It is stable yeah. in a straight line, but you've lost that sharp mm -hmm. drive. Yeah, and in, that's all to do with. Turns. So on an exit of a turn, which has got a good amount of banking in it, you'll probably find that you're, hang on a minute, I'm running a bit mm. wide on it. On the exit, well, last week we under the other tyres, I wasn't as wide. Yeah. It's just pure and simply down to that radius of the tyre. But that radius of tyre, and this is one of the things you have to bear in mind, is you shouldn't mix manufacturers of tyres, is that radius of that tyre there on the back is matched to the front. Yeah. So if you have a bridge turn on the front, don't put a Dunlop or Pirelli oh, on the mate. back. Oh, mate, I know, I know. vice versa. I know. I know sometimes people do it to save money, don't they? But really, it's You're always... you saving money. No. You've only got that much in contact with the road <laughs> yeah. at any time. And it's important. You yeah. fall off this very easily, mm -hmm. okay? But it's all about fun. Yeah. So if someone has done what I've done here and they've changed the tyres and they think, oh, it's changed the handling of my bike, what can they then do? Well, with this particular bike, you've got an adjustable shock absorber on it now. Yeah. What you could play with is the settings on the shock absorber. Mm -hmm. Now, you may want to look at raising the ride height a little bit. Okay. Just one complete turn, which would be one millimetre, which you just pick the back of the bike up and just pop it on its nose a little bit more. Sounds perfect. And that'll give it back its sharpness. Yeah. You know, if you've got a tyre that's sharp and you go in the other way. Yeah, you can go the other way to yeah, bring a bit more stability. Clear, clear, don't be afraid of adjusting this stuff. No, no, you know, you're right. It won't bite you. No, no I agree. Um, while we've got you here, some people have commented that this is a bit rubbish. Yeah. Um, some people have also said, couldn't we just turn them around? And they've got a point. Yeah, and I could have turned them around. Yeah. But the reason for doing it mm -hmm. was to, to get Nitron to understand that motorcyclists are also 9 out of 10 engineer-wise mm. inclined. Let's get this right. It's a very simple little bracket. It could have been a ring bracket that fitted onto there and bolted onto there. Mm. It didn't need this. No. It's someone who hasn't thought about what they're, they're yeah. doing. Either inexperienced or lazy, that could be another thing. It certainly ain't a cost-wise, because no. to make this bracket here, see, even this tin one, it, it ain't really strong enough. No, it needs to be, it needs to always have two well, connected twice could, somewhere there. The maybe. way I would design this is you've got a perfectly good round cylindrical drum. Mm -hmm. Make a clamp that goes over that, that bolts to this, mm -hmm. and then you can make this bracket out of decent material so it doesn't do this. Yeah. Because eventually that will break. Yeah, that's true. Did Mr. Yam had design years like that? <laughs> no. No, he would have thought about it a little bit more. That's not me derogatory down putting Nitron. Nitron mm. I like as a product and yep. so forth. And I'm making good. Oh, it's but a bloody it's good product. Just, it works, yeah. It's just yeah. about some. It's the aesthetics feedback. as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's all about that. And even if you turn it around, it's still Jubilee clips. Yeah, yeah. I will give Nitron this, though. They have been, you know, over the years, they've been coming yeah, on they're, leaps they're, and bounds. So yeah. this is something they probably will look at in the future and go, do you know what? Maybe we should 
we should change that. And you know, you and me, we could actually turn those around. They do have some brilliant design things, which none of the other manufacturers do. This, mm. on a positive side, is absolutely fantastic. None of the other shock absorber manufacturers use this ball system. No. So there's no problems with routing of lines. Yeah. No, it is, that is good. There's it's some a fantastic idea. You're right. So there is some, there is some lovely bits. And uh, yeah, but we'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll whip these around at one point, won't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll but even still, you, the point you make is correct. Even if they're turned round and you've got black, it's still Jubilee clips. It's still a Jubilee clip. Yeah, on a wobbly... Yeah. Ba -dye, ba -dye. You can dress it up as, as much as you want. You can roll it in glitter as much as you want. Yeah. It's still a Jubilee clip. It's a very good point. Actually, somebody did say £800 and Jubilee clips, question mark. <laughs> yeah on YouTube and yeah they, they, they do have a point right then um, okay that is pretty much it for this little instalment um, I think we might actually get I said there's gonna be two more blogs but now I think there'll be two more after this because this is just an extra little one I'm gonna leave this here with James because James is going to put something nice on it for me aren't you James <laughs> which we have seen already is it about still it's upstairs. Oh, it's upstairs now. It's upstairs. Okay, well, we had to clean up, didn't we, when I was away at CT? You did. We so, if you go back through some of the previous um, vlogs, you'll see the M4 exhaust that James is going to put on. That looks awesome. Uh, and whilst it's here, as I'm going to leave it here, you might actually do the thing that I wasn't going to bother with, which is the ECU. Yeah, we're going to play around the ECU. Okay. Um, leave the power commander on. Right. Know, because we can leave the power commander on. That's not doing anything detrimental. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. But we want to explore the possible extra gains that could be had or enhancements with ECU. Yeah, Mapping. fair enough, fair enough. So, there you go. And we're going to wash oh. it with a power washer. Don't do washing. Okay, yeah, we do a little bit. Well, it needs to be clean. It needs to be clean for the grand finale I was telling you guys about in the last one. But um, anyway, so this is just, yeah, just a quick thing. A little bit of chain cleaning because James is awesome. And uh, just, you know, I don't know if anyone's as lazy as me, probably not, but it does happen. I've seen plenty of chains in worse state than this. And it is just literally a bit of elbow grease, as he points out, and it's easy with three or four different things and, and you're away. So anyway, this is going to stay here, it's going to get some more love, and we'll check in with the next one. Bye. Say goodbye, James. Bye-bye, James. Bye -bye. See, he did it properly, unlike John. Did it properly.